welcome to Learn from the Experts presented to you by the Women Business Owners Alliance. The WBOA is an organization made up of over 100 women entrepreneurs from the Pioneer Valley. And we're here today with some experts to share their expertise with you, our viewers. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I'm Kim Shagnon, owner of Kim's Upholstery, and I'm here with my co-host. Hi, I'm Susan Allen from Susan Allen Financial, and today we're interviewing Alexis Johnson from the International Language Institute, and we have a few questions for you. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, we wanted to know, um, well, first of all, I wanted to know as far as learning a language, is there any age that's really optimal to start learning a language? Can you learn at any age? You can learn at any age. Uh, obviously, the younger you are, the easier it is because you're not even thinking about it. You're just doing it. And as we get older, the walls go up. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what, what, wait, what's that in English? And people <laughs> want to translate. And if you start by translating, it's a crutch that you'll never be able to throw away. Also, when you're younger, you naturally um, have an accent, you, the accent of the language that you're studying. When you're older, okay. it's more difficult. Mm -hmm. There are some that are easier than others, and I can go into that if you're yeah. interested. Yeah. yeah, what are the easier um, languages for English speakers? Well, one of the most phonetic languages is Spanish, and we're mm -hmm. very lucky because that's the language in this hemisphere that if you need a second language is the most um, optimal. Mm -hmm. And it's a very phonetic language. What you see is it's a, the sound spelling correspondence is almost exact as long as you know the vowel sounds are a, e, i, o, u, right? And you never say you and it's ga, go, gu, and he, he. You know, once you know those things, you can read anything. You can pronounce anything that you read and mm -hmm. you could write anything that you hear. And I often tell my, we work with adults and I'll say that it's up to them because interestingly enough we have 13 sounds vowel sounds in English and there are only five in Spanish yo puedo hablar español con un acento terrible pero todo el mundo me puede entender now long as we don't have to repeat that yes. oh, yo puedo hablar español con un acento perfecto y todo el mundo me puede entender so I say, which did you like better, number one or number two? And they say, well, number two. I said, but the thing is that if even with that we gringo accent on the first one, mm -hmm. people will still understand you. And they won't laugh at you. They'll mm -hmm. just realize that that's your accent. Okay. Unfortunately, when Spanish speakers or other uh, speakers try to speak English as, as adults, it, sometimes the accent is much more difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes people are not very patient and it, it's just it's much more difficult. So I say you've got, you have the choice. You can speak any way you want, but you can have a good accent if you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and here are the, the tricks or the, 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 the rules and it's very phonetic. So I highly recommend studying Spanish, any language. I've studied many, many languages. I love them all, mm -hmm. but uh, Spanish is a good a good, place to a good place to start. Yes. Plus, there's a lot of opportunities just to practice it with it being Absolutely. on TV. There's a lot of access. Right. I you guess. can it's eavesdrop. Right. You can buy magazines <laughs> over the counter and almost anywhere in Spanish. You can watch uh, on TV. The Spanish channel, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what about the methods you use? How do you, where do you start? Well, we're passionate about this. Um, Janice Rogers and I started the school 30 years ago, and Carolyn Gear, who is school director and I have been doing this together. We're like an old married couple now. <laughs> and we are passionate about methodology that engages the student. You know, I don't know if you studied languages in high school? Or yes, college. many years ago. And <laughs> was it the kind of thing where the teacher would write, yo hablo, tu hablas, yes. él habla, and it's like the class just sits there and watches the teacher do all the work. Right. So we say lazy teacher, active student. Of course, the teacher does a lot of work behind the scenes, but the teacher facilitates the language learning. So mm -hmm. I want to get from you, if you see their patterns, and I want you to be thinking about this. I would rather you learn from her than from me. And when we get our students working in pairs and working in small groups, then the teacher will go around monitoring. And it's amazing what you can do with only even 10 hours of Spanish, you can really have conversations. Mm -hmm. You are not going to be fluent and you're not <laughs> going to be perfect, but then perfection is highly overrated. I right, think. that's true. <laughs> well, that's great. Now, are there any languages that are really difficult for English speakers? I've heard Chinese before. Is that? Well, Chinese, I've studied Chinese mm -hmm. and um, the characters, I would never attempt to learn the 
to write in They're Chinese. Written for I them. might do a few a few characters because mm -hmm. they're kind of universal. You know, you can oh, I can recognize that. But the grammar is very easy because there are no tenses. So I go to the store today. I go to the store yesterday. I go to the store tomorrow. You don't change the verb, which okay. in every language they're either conjugated or they're irregular and they're just a, a, a nightmare. The difficult part of Chinese um, are the tones. There are four tones. So, uh, ma, 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 could mean rice, dog, mother, or I forget what the fourth one is. Oh, so that's wow. a big difference okay, between so. I want some rice and I want my mother. Or I want a dog. You know, <laughs> and so that's the most difficult part for mm -hmm. for most people in Chinese. Mm -hmm. Again, if you're really young, you can hear that naturally and you can start to imitate it. Um, but as you're older. It's a yeah, little more yeah. difficult. Yeah. Now, what's this about like the male female thing? A lot of the languages have that, which I know English does not. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, English. Or do that. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's why people use they when they should be using he, she. Oh, um, okay. Mm -hmm. because it's grammatically incorrect, but that's okay. We, wanna, we don't <laughs> want it to be sexist. Most languages are sexist. And in Spanish, for example, we would say nosotras, we are sitting here. One man sits down and we should say nosotros. Okay. Because, mm -hmm. so I say, like to say, well, nosotros is the general term, but women have an extra term <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. if, they just, if it's just women and it's nosotras. Um, but times are changing. Times are changing. And it's interesting the different words that are coming into play in different languages. So, mm -hmm. so what we'll advice see. could you give someone that wants to learn a different language and doesn't, doesn't have a specific one in mind, but where would they start? At the beginning. <laughs> uh, I would recommend a class mm -hmm. because, um, and I would recommend that they they ask about the methodology. Um, and it's interesting what people will say. Well, what is you want to hear the word student-centered or learner-centered? You want to hear communicative. You don't want to hear conversation class necessarily because. If you know nothing of Spanish, for example, or French, or Italian, or German, you can't sit down and have a conversation. You have to learn some grammar and vocabulary, and of course you're going to have conversation right from the beginning. The mm -hmm. very first class that we offer, you walk out of there being able to say things. And I'll bet if I said to you, me llamo Alexis. ¿Cómo te llamas? Susan. ¿Cómo te llamas? Kim. <laughs> Yo estoy en uh, Northampton High School. ¿Dónde estás tú? Right? You can understand what I'm saying because mm -hmm. I'm speaking in context right. and a lot of repetition. By the end of the class, people are saying, my name is this, where do you live? I live here, I work here, where do you work? Um, I don't speak Spanish. Oh, do you speak Spanish? You know, they can have a nice little conversation, yeah. which will serve them. And that's the thing. You don't want, we, we wrote our own books and they're just a guide and we don't sit in the classroom with everybody looking at the books because no that's to take home that's to do at home you want to use the language you want to maximize your time in the class you don't want to be listening to the teacher constantly mm -hmm. you don't want to be looking at, you want to be using it and playing with it and feeling confident with it um, and uh, making mistakes that's okay and um, having fun. I want to hear laughter coming out of the classrooms. People are tired. It's after work normally and uh, the roads are a mess and they <laughs> couldn't find a parking space and so I like to hear like, what? It's time already? Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. That's music to my ears. Right. Um, That's so great. I really recommend that you, um, the people investigate where they're going to be learning and make sure that it is a student-centered and not as one time one of our teachers went on a uh, an accreditation visit because we were accredited by asset and um, he said he asked the director well so what do you mean by student centered oh well the teacher stands in front of the class and all the students are centered <laughs> on the teacher no that's mm -hmm. not what student centered <laughs> means but and at any rate you want to make sure that um, you're getting that type of uh, interaction. Of interaction. interaction yeah. My my eleven year old niece is studying Spanish, and I just I cringe when she mm -hmm. asks me to translate this or that, and I th and I said, what, what what is your assignment? <laughs> and it's, funny. it's really it's sad. It's mm -hmm. really sad because she spoke Spanish as a baby, and it should be coming back to her now, and it's not, and it mm -hmm. makes me very sad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I wanted to thank you for joining us today, Alexis. You're very welcome. And thank you. Thank you to our viewers. We'll be right back. And if you'd like to get more information about Alexis Johnson, you can visit WBOA.org and get the information on the International Language Institute. Thank you again. Thanks. Thank you.